my name is uh, Gary Stevenson, and in, in our church, I would have the title of elder and one of the members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. And I am traveling in five countries in Africa on this trip, but one that I've truly looked forward to is the trip that I'm making uh, here to Rwanda and to have, have been able to meet and greet many of the people of, of your beautiful country. As a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, one of the key responsibilities uh, and, and honors that I have is to go around the world and bear my witness of Jesus Christ and of Jesus Christ as our Savior and Redeemer. The church is the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We sometimes refer to it as the restored church of Jesus Christ. Uh, and it is a global church. Uh, the church is, uh, was organized in 1830 and the membership is over 16 million members now. Uh, we are in uh, 100, uh, over 130 countries and uh, we have congregations around the world. Uh, our congregations uh, exceed 30,000. Uh, and the church has been uh, established throughout the world since 1830. Early on in the history of the church, uh, in the early 1850s, the church came to Africa. And today in Africa, we have over 2,000 congregations and we have uh, about uh, nearly 1,500 meeting houses that are scattered throughout uh, uh, most of the countries uh, in Africa. Now, we have been uh, in Rwanda for a shorter period of time. The government provided uh, registration for the church in 2013. And so we're fairly new here. Uh, we have a discipline within the church to work very closely with any government uh, where we desire to, to have a presence. And so we work closely with the Rwandan government uh, in receiving registration in 2013. And we continue to work very, very closely with them as we continue to establish our presence here. We have about 750 members. Uh, with three congregations in Rwanda. And we're working closely. Uh, even this morning, I had the opportunity to meet with the Honorable Minister Shaka to talk about what we're doing here and to keep him, keep him informed about, about uh, our membership, uh, the missionaries that we have that, uh, that work here, many of them that come from other countries and work here, the missionaries that come from here that are serving in other places around the world uh, and, and to talk about uh, the plans that we have working closely with them with respect to uh, uh, building, uh, constructing meeting houses uh, and, and uh, continuing to build our presence in your beautiful country. Of course, one of the reasons that we were here was to, to meet with senior government officials. We're able to do that with the Honorable Minister Shaka and his staff and to describe to him the things that we are doing and the way that we want to do it in complete compliance with, with the, the desires and the regulations uh, that the government has put forth for religious institutions here. Now, one of the things that they encourage and one of the things that we have practiced in, in all of the countries uh, where, where we uh, are registered is, is an interfaith uh, outreach. And uh, they look forward to those religions who are participating in R Rwanda who have a presence here to have a warm cooperation with other faiths. And of course, this is something that, uh, that we have done uh, here and in other places. And so while we were here, we had the chance to, to meet with the leaders of the, of the Adventist Church. Uh, we actually visited their, 
their campus and met with uh, the Honorable President Bilinguiro uh, and, uh, and members of his staff, people would be interested to know that we have a humanitarian partnership with them, with the Adventist Relief Group, uh, in many countries in the world. In, in just uh, in uh, recent years, together, we have uh, done projects that uh, total $25 million of humanitarian work in other places. We also have a very close relationship with the Catholic Church uh, and have participated in, in Catholic relief for, for refugees, uh, for people who are in deep need, uh, in Catholic, Catholic uh, uh, community uh, services in many places in the world. And so as we come here, uh, one of the things we look forward to is, is having an outreach and an interfaith uh, aspect in Rwanda as well. And so for that reason, I am here also. I came to meet with the members of our church and had the opportunity to do that on Sunday night. And missionaries who are serving here you may understand our missionary service, young people when they are, turn 18 or 19 years old can volunteer to serve as a full-time missionary uh, for 18 or 24 months. And when they, when they uh, apply to do this, they'll receive uh, an assignment to serve anywhere in the world. And interestingly, of the, of the 24 missionaries who are serving in in Kigali right now, they come from 14 different countries. Uh, many countries in Africa, uh, from, from Ghana and from Nigeria and from Zimbabwe and from South Africa, Zambia, Uganda, Uganda, all of these countries, but also countries around the world, the Pacific Islands, uh, the United States and Canada, New Zealand, that is just a sampling of the missionaries who are serving here, who are coming to know and love Rwanda over 18 to 24 months in a way that's incomparable. They, they leave and they go back to their countries and they become the greatest ambassadors to Rwanda. I've just been here three days and I'm so touched. They spend a year and a half or two years here and they leave, they leave here with Rwanda always being a part of their heart. And when they go out to their countries, they can't quit talking about the beauty of the country, of the people, of the relationships that they've formed, of the friendships that they have, of the spiritual experiences that they share together. And so, the things that we hoped to do while we were here, we've been able to do, including being able to meet with you and to talk uh, to the people that, that read your online newspaper about the wonderful impressions that we have that we leave here with. Now, one of the things that I hope to do as well is both bear a witness to the people here of Jesus Christ to invite people to come unto Christ, to invite people to strengthen their families, find goodness in the gospel of Jesus Christ, as, and as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to bless them and to be able to bless your country. And uh, I was able to do that as we met with the members and as we meet with the missionaries and deem it a, a wonderful privilege to be touched in such a special way by the goodness of, of the people in your country. Well, as I indicated, uh, the church was established in the 1830s. Uh, one of the things that you might recognize uh, about the church, but that is also something that is very different about the church, is, is part of the ecclesiastical structure the church is headed by uh, the president of the church, uh, President Russell M. Nelson, 
who, is, who leads the church as the president of the church, but who we also sustain as a prophet of the church. Now, of course, we all have a familiarity about uh, prophets uh, because we view our, uh, our doctrine of God being our Father in heaven and we being his children uh, and knowing that God loves us and wants to communicate to his children. He has done this in ages past in previous dispensations through prophets. And so you'd be familiar with Old Testament prophets. We think of Adam, uh, of Noah, of Abraham, of Moses, all of who were Old Testament prophets. And because of Heavenly Father's love for his children, he has communicated to them and his will, to, his will for them through prophets of different dispensations. Uh, even Jesus Christ came to the earth uh, in the same way as the only begotten Son of God the Father, of our Heavenly Father. He established His church and became a mouthpiece uh, for uh, Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. Well, in this dispensation in which we live now, following the uh, death of Jesus Christ and, and the the apostles who he established and, and gave authority to uh, Peter, James, and John. As they suffered and passed away, uh, the world kind of suffered a period of spiritual darkness. And our loving Heavenly Father once again provided a way to speak to his children again through a prophet. And so our church was established in 1830 as God the Father and Jesus Christ appeared to a young man named Joseph Smith, he became a prophet, a living prophet on the earth. And through him, we have Heavenly Father who is communicating his will to his children. And since the establishment of the church, there have been a line of prophets who have been on the earth, who we view as those who are a mouthpiece. And so if the Lord has an important uh, something important for his children to hear and know. He establishes that through his prophets today. And this would be one of the things that, that uh, would be different about us. We describe ourselves as the restored church of Jesus Christ. Uh, many Protestant faiths describe themselves as reformed. Well, we are a restored church of Jesus Christ. Uh, with the, the authority on the earth today. Now that would be, uh, as, as you asked, that would be one of the primary differences of our church. If I were to talk about the things that we, that we truly emphasize, we emphasize faith in Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ and His atonement. We emphasize families and and we have ordinances that have been restored on the earth today that allow families to be bound together eternally. And so when our people are married, their marriage is a marriage that takes place in a sacred temple, the house of the Lord. And when they're married, they're married for time and all eternity. That means that when they take their vows, the vows are not till death do us part, but they vow to be husband and wife for time and all eternity. So when we leave this earth and in the afterlife where we're returning to the presence of our Heavenly Father through the atonement of Jesus Christ, we return as families that are bound together, husbands and wives with children connected or bound or sealed to them. That too would be a unique doctrine that we that we have but not a unique element it was interesting today as I was uh, visiting with with the uh, Honorable Minister Shaka that he said families are very important in Rwanda and we emphasize how important it is for our families to be together and find strength in their homes well, when I heard that, I thought, well, that is exactly 
where we are and what we hope to do with the members of the Restored Church of Jesus Christ, our church members, is build strong families, build their, their strength first in their homes, husbands and wives, teaching their children correct principles, teaching them how to be good citizens, how to receive an education, how to build their faith in Jesus Christ, to be bound together eternally. And we feel that we glorify our Heavenly Father. We glorify Him by living in a way that we can return to His presence. My message, I hope, is a as a mouthpiece of Jesus Christ, as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, would be a message of peace, a message of hope, a message of joy. I feel that it is here in your country. I see the beautiful smiles on the faces of your children. I see their bright eyes. As, as, uh, as I've said, when I close my eyes and I think of your country, I think of Rwanda, Rwanda. I think the first image that will come to my mind will be an image of your children and their smiles and their bright eyes. The second will be an image of the forgiving nature of the people of Rwanda, the kindness that they have. And so my message to them would be, Heavenly Father loves you. He desires that you all return to Him. He has provided a way to return to Him through the atonement of our Savior Jesus Christ. And my message is that Jesus is the Christ. He is the literal Son of God. And through Him, through the suffering uh, uh, of His earthly ministry in the Garden of Gethsemane on the, on the, on the cross, and his resurrection. Through that, his atonement, we all can return to the presence of our loving Heavenly Father as families to live forever. And I offer that testimony and that witness to the people of your beautiful country. And I would offer that testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm.